we'll be diving into Python as well as uh, getting to learn a little bit about GitHub if you join the uh, the data engineering portion in the breakout sessions, or you'll have the opportunity to build maps uh, in the exploratory data analysis portion. So as you can see, this is our agenda for today. Uh, we'll, we're doing the intro right now and discussing the agenda. Then we'll discuss some of the prerequisites in terms of what type of applications you would have installed, as well as um, any other uh, knowledge that would be helpful in, in carrying out the workshops uh, later on during this session. Um, so the next part of it will be the prerequisites, which we'll quickly discuss for about five minutes. Then we'll dive into the a little bit of a summary of the three breakout sessions to get you, give you an idea of getting data and using APIs, as well as data cleaning, exploratory data analysis, and other insights. And then we'll be also have the ability to uh, discuss how we document the data using Jupyter Book and create apps using Streamlit. Uh, once you once we've provided an idea of the the different types of the, the basically the data science process as a whole, you'll get to decide like what breakout session you'd like to dive into to learn more in more detail. And then at the end, we'll follow up with a summary and have any open questions and answers and final thoughts. As mentioned earlier, um, we are using Python uh, for this talk. However, any programming background, whether it's C sharp or uh, SQL, um, is helpful and but not required. Uh, this is a beginner to a tutorial and uh, we'll be there to guide you through the process. Um, it also helps if you had some experience uh, doing some sort of data analysis, whether it's uh, building regression models or uh, getting data from various uh, sources, whether it's a database or a cloud service like AWS. And it uh, also helps to have some familiarity with uh, Jupyter Notebook. So there are different ways to interact with code um, one of the ways that we use as uh, data scientists and data analysts is uh, Jupyter Notebooks. And that serves as a great interactive environment uh, for running code and seeing what the output is. And so with that being said, uh, let's begin our Obsessed with Boba. So we have a few links that will be helpful. And I believe some of them are going to be dropped in the chat as well. And that to our, all our code is made available and freely uh, free of use uh, for anybody. So if you were to go to our GitHub site, you would see our all our code and be able to download it and and try out uh, the different uh, the different uh, scripts that we put together. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we put together a website at boba-nyc.dataelect.nyc that organizes all the work into a uh, organized structure that's easy to follow for all. And then finally, we've also made slides available uh, for you. So if you were to go to our, our GitHub, you'll see a PDF of the slides as well. Um, so even if you miss something, it's you'll be able to get it uh, after the talk. So with regards to uh, what we do, the breakout sessions, uh, there are two ways of accessing the data. And we're going to sh show you it when we get closer to that period. Uh, one is using Google CoLab, and the other is using MindBinder. And basically, this will allow you to run the code uh, in your browser without having to install anything on your computer. And we thought that uh, the access um, to the code and being able to run the code we felt was very important for this workshop. And that's why we worked as, uh, pretty hard to make sure it was, it was ready for use today and tested. Um, a few notes with regards to downloading the files. Uh, you can also download them by going to our GitHub site and selecting the code and the download link and then unzip the, the files and they'll, and then you can, um, you'll see all the files related to this project. As mentioned earlier, uh, we have a few breakout rooms as well. And this is where you, we're gonna dive a little deeper into the different, pro different phases of the data science process. Um, one of the first things you do um, when working with a problem is thinking about what data sets will help you answer the questions you have. So Nate will be diving into getting this data using the Yelp API, as well as we'll, you'll be practicing using the Socrata API, um, both uh, utilizing Python. From there, um, you'll have an opportunity, if you're interested, to also look at how we document our project. So we had four of us involved in this project, and we needed a, a, wef, a method for us to um, continue to make updates without interrupting the progress of our fellow uh, presenters. So to do that, uh, we used GitHub and our 
process of putting it all together, all our notebooks and all our scripts together, we used Jupyter Book Library to do that. And it helped organize, test, and publish our documentation. Also, we built a simple app to see how powerful it is that, to build apps just using Python without having to note additional, additional code, such as HTML, CSS, or various uh, JavaScript um, libraries or frameworks such as React or Vue. And lastly, if you're a fan of visualizations and maps, then I highly recommend the EDA Maps and Insights that Ho and Mark will be presenting. Uh, you'll get to read in data, you'll get to uh, check out the exploratory data analysis in terms of uh, what are the columns and what data types there are, and then some summary statistics as well. Then you'll be able to cre create some pretty awesome maps. And then finally, we'll dive into the uh, QA and final thoughts. And then at the end, we also, in the in our GitHub repo, we have our contact information. So you'll be able to reach out to us, whether it's on LinkedIn, GitHub, or Twitter. So I'd like to thank you again for joining us. And I'm going to hand it off to Nate to discuss the getting data using API. Well, thank you, Chidi, and thanks so much. i um, very excited. I've been attending Open Data for a few years, and it's my first time presenting. So um, and I'm very excited to be presenting about boba tea because I admit I am a boba obsessed person. I've had to, you know, identify boba tea in my budget and be like, I need to reduce that a little bit. So I, I love boba and I'm very excited to be here with everyone today. So thanks so much. So I have some reminders here. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to say um, first. So this presentation or this part of the presentation is about REST APIs. Um, and the purpose of this is use cases for data analysts and data analytics. Um, so that's kind of the perspective that we're going to go over and look at APIs through. And, and so on that note, why is this important? Um, why is this useful for a data analyst? Well, there's many reasons, but a couple um, you know, use cases. So oftentimes, and let's say when we're talking about NYC open data, for example, we have some very large data sets. Um, you know, folks who are data analysts often encounter huge data sets, and it's not always efficient to download all of the data. Sometimes you want to download, you know, certain pieces of the data um, so you don't, you know, crash your computer and you don't have to wait for 10 minutes every time you run something. Um, this also applies for creating automated reports. Let's say you want to make a dashboard or you want to create uh, or do some data wrangling, make some visualizations, analyze data, do an EDA. Um, this can be important for creating automation because you don't want to have to, you know, download all the data all the time. And by querying an API, you can create that automated process and it can run smoothly for you. Um, I will say this is a demonstration. So I am going to show my API key more on that later. Just wanted to say, this is not best practice. If you're really building an app or a report, um, you're going to not want to display your API key, but I am today because this is a demonstration. Um, so this is, you know, just a fun project. Okay, great. Um, and so in this uh, quick introduction, I'm going to be talking about the Socrata API. And later in the breakout rooms, uh, we're going to be working with the Yelp Fusion API. And then we'll get to see all the Boba data. Um, but, you know, as a shout out to Open Data, NYC Data Week, we're going to be looking at APIs to introduce it through using the Socrata API. Okay, so great. Thank you. And um, to get started, so what is an API? Just go over some quick definitions. So, and, and specifically a REST API. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer Design Pattern. Um, so, and I guess the important thing about REST APIs is what separates them from a normal website. So, you know, if you go to cnn.com, this is a standard website and you're going to access that website and you're going to receive content that a viewer can engage with visually, right? A uh, REST API is a website that's just for extracting data. So it's a website that you can query with a URL and you can extract uh, whatever data you're querying. So that's the purpose of a REST API. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, and we're gonna be looking at the Socrata API. So we're going to also be looking at a really fun data set right now, almost as fun as Boba, or I don't know if you have any dog lovers out there, but we're going to be looking at the NYC dog license data set for our API query. Just do a quick demo with that. So the dog license data set here in NYC open data, 
And for folks who are familiar with open data, um, you've seen the opening page for a data set before. So you have a lot of great information. We're not gonna do a deep dive into that now, um, but we have you know, a great table preview. We can also view the data and take a look at the data. We can filter it. There's a lot of great um, features here on the open data website. So, but we're going to focus today on querying the API with Python. Okay, great. So what does that look like? So when you use, when you query an API, the URL has a standard structure and it depends. Every API has its own documentation and it has its own details. So you always want to look at the documentation, which we'll look at in a second. But generally speaking, it's going to look like a URL that has headers sometimes. It's going to have a base URL and an endpoint. It's going to have parameters, which are, um, the parameters are used to filter and query the data and oftentimes an API key. And that is to authenticate what user you are and which gives you special privileges. And sometimes you need it just to access the data set. Fortunately for NYC open data, as it is open data, you don't necessarily have to have an API key, but there are certain benefits to that, which we'll talk about in a moment. Okay, great. So what does a URL look like? So if we move down here, um, we're going to have specifically for the Socrata API, we need the base URL. That's the same um, for all NYC open data data sets. You're going to have this HTTPS data.cityofnewyork.us slash resource. And then the end of that uh, base URL endpoint is an ID that's specific to the data set. So here you can see it's NU7N TUBP. So this is going to identify specifically the NYC dog license data set. Okay, great. So, well, what does that look like? So we have a couple of queries right here. And, you know, if you're accessing this notebook after the fact, um, or, you know, with us today, as we interact with it, we will we'll do in, as we will do in the breakout rooms, you can click the link or you can copy paste in your browser. So let's try this one. So here we have the base URL and we're going to filter with a parameter that's just to pull out a specific row number. Okay. So, and this is, so we queried the API, we sent this URL and we received back this information, which is in JSON format. Great. And we can try another one. So this one is now we're going to query for, if you can see at the end, animal page, animal name equals page and zip code and see what we get. Okay. So we just queried the API and we got these two results. So two rows in the data match that query. And so that's the general idea. And next we're going to look at the documentation and learn how to query it with Python. So as I said before, you always want to, anytime you're accessing an API, look at the API documentation. So here we have the NYC dog licensing data set, a lot of all the information you may need. But here we have that uh, base URL and endpoint specific for the dog license data. Uh, we have information about app tokens, which I'm going to talk about in about a minute. Um, but that's um, an important one. And also we have all of the fields. So you remember when we were looking at the data set, the field names here are, are the, the column names, right? So if we look at all of the column names, we see we have, for example, row number, animal name, et cetera. And here we can query all of the column names. And these are what we're gonna use to query and filter our data for things that we want. So for example, we use the animal name in, um, in one of the examples here. So animal name equals page. There's, I think that's the name that I used, wasn't it? And so from the documentation, you can get all of the information you need to make your queries, right? There's also some great examples. So you can see, you'll recognize this. This is uh, the Python pandas, pandas example using the SodaPy library. Um, so the SodaPy library is a library created by Socrata, um, which you can use with Python specifically to query the data. And so why use SodaPy and why use Python? Well, we're going to see in a second that it's easier because we can input the parameters and the endpoints and the app tokens conveniently in Python code. So we don't have to create or write these really long URL queries. Okay, great. So we've looked at the documentation. Um, now I'm just going to say a quick thing about application tokens and API keys. So, you know, open data, you do not need to use an application token or an API key. But I will say application tokens are important and I would recommend that you use them. API keys are not as important for, in, in, at least in the context of this presentation, this is more for giving privileges to access and be able to edit and change the data. So we're not going to be doing that today, but I will 
um, say this link here will give you more information on that. And this link here will explain how to generate an app token. And I think, um, I think I'm getting low on time, but we'll have a chance to you know, talk about all this stuff in more detail in the breakout room if you're interested in learning more about uh, querying APIs. Okay, so how do we do the query in Python? We, you can see in this code snippet here, we have the Socrata uh, client. And you can see here in the client.get um, method, we can input all of the pieces of the URL that we were talking about. So we input the identifier for the data set. Uh, we're using limit here to limit the amount of results we get. Um, and then we can use something, uh, well, we can use the so, no so SQL, sorry. So SQL is based on SQL and allows us to conveniently query all of the things that we're interested in. So here you can kind of see how the structure works. We're gonna use where equals, where the SOSQL um, query, and we're going to set it equal to breed name is Akita, and that will filter the data for us with the breed name column. So let's just take a look at how this works. All uh, right, so we have our data, and let's just take a look at what this data looks like. Okay, so we have the breed name Akita, we have used the Socrata client, we filtered our data, and let's take a look at what that looks like on a map. Okay, great. So. Um, we can see where are the Akitas located in New York City. It looks like our winner appears to be the South Bronx. Okay, great. Um, so now we've seen kind of the basics of how to go into Socrata, use a Socrata client in Python to query results. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the breakout room later, if you're interested in learning more about querying APIs. And now we're gonna get to the exciting stuff and find out more about uh, Boba data. Um, so thank you so much, and I will pass it on. Oh, actually, no, first of all, let me say, was there any questions? I think we have a couple, maybe one minute or so, if there are any questions. Uh, yeah, sure, Nate. Uh, what's your favorite boba and why? Oh, oh well. And why is it Yu Fang? Yeah, Yu Fang. Well, let's see. I am drinking currently, I hope you can see it because my, uh, my background is going to block it out, but I'm drinking a passion fruit boba with mango popping bubbles. So I love it. It's very sweet. I had 100% sugar. I probably shouldn't do 100%, but it's very delicious. And that's my favorite. Thank you. Nate, I had a quick question about the uh, API. If you could scroll up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, right there. Oh, sorry, too far. Um, down a little bit. It's where the... Oh, sorry, right there. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Scroll I think there's up. a delay. It's not your fault. Is okay. it? Okay, okay, right there. So in the client.get, mm -hmm. that first thing, where does that um, sequence come from? Okay, so you're talking about inside of the parentheses here? Yeah, the very first item, the NU7. Oh, yes. Great. So yeah, so this, if you go to the, um, the dog license, the documentation, yeah. this is going to, so that is our identifier. So all of the base URLs for NYC open data is going to have this initial HTTPS data.cityofnewyork.us slash resource. And then after the forward slash of that base URL, the, this is the ID that we're talking about, the nu7n-tubp.json. That is your identifier that identifies a particular data set. So in this case, this is specifically for the NYC dog licensing data set. If you're going to be using you know, the Pluto data set, they would have a different identifier here. I see. Thank you. Right, thank you so much for the question. Um, if, there, if there's no other questions, I'm happy to uh, pass it on uh, to Chidi, right? It's going to be Mark and Ho. And oh, sorry, Mark and Ho. Oh, Thank okay. you. Okay. Sure, yeah. I guess I'll go first and kind of like uh, display what will go on in the EDA work workshop, working with pandas, uh, specifically how do we inspect the data, how do we wrangle the data, uh, look for NA values, uh, calculate summary stats. Let me just sh show everybody a quick like snippet of that. Okay, can everybody uh, see this screen? Everybody can see it perfect. So the workshop that I'll be presenting is T-Book. This is our GitHub page. If folks um, haven't been here, a quick, quick, quick overview about this GitHub page. Uh, some of those sample plots, table of contents, in case folks got in late. Some of, uh, some of those Git commands about cloning this project. Uh, some more stats, et cetera. <clears throat> Yelp Fusion API info, the specific data sets that we used in this project, <clears throat> um, notebooks, streamlit app demo, et cetera, et cetera. Open source applications used. Okay. Um, so 
I guess briefly, this is the workshop Ho and I will be conducting. It's under Boba Analysis NYC. So here we go. Uh, so after we've like retrieved all of that information from a given a- API, in this case, Yelp Fusion Business API, uh, what's after that? What type of questions should we ask when your boss or your supervisor says, hey, uh, there's this new uh, data set, we'll look at it for us and come back with insights and uh, develop questions for us. So we're just going to read in this data, inspect the data with all of these pandas methods, uh, look at its shape, some of the column data types, uh, identify percent null, some basic summary uh, stats or descriptive statistics of what uh, what Boba business has the like most shops in the five boroughs, which is very interesting to me. And then we're just going to follow up with some plots. Okay, so average number. And then I think I'm going to pass it on to my colleague Ko if she wants to give uh, some like info about uh, both of our sessions combined. So let me stop sharing. Thanks, Mark. I will share my screen. Okay, so this is some example maps we are going to make in the session. I think sometimes visual, especially map, convey stronger information um, than just number. So in in my session, uh, our session, you are going to be able to do uh, make some maps and trying to see. So we are going to see which neighborhood in NYC is best for. Bobati in terms of like ratings and counts of uh, Bobati shop. Yeah, and mainly we'll be using pandas, geopandas, and my plot library. So if you are interested in, definitely come to our session. Are there questions for us, Ho and I, about basic Python, pandas, maps? What's our favorite uh, boba shop? I would like to know what your favorite boba shops are. My? My. Okay, I think Trudent's pretty good. So and also, I like uh, I like uh, melon winter melon tea and and lemon with boba. That's pretty nice. Mm. I don't even know if anyone tried that before. <laughs> What's yours, Mark? Oh boy, I have like several. I mean, I'll I think I've tried about like thirty of them. Uh, but I prefer Yi Yi Fong, and I get like classic milk tea uh, with with boba. Uh, no ice. 30% sugar. It's just like my, I've like tried all of the like fancy things, taro, like this and that. Uh, but I just love classic, classic boba milk tea. So, and I think Chidi's going to kind of discuss yeah. uh, his workshop as well. Yeah. So my workshop is going to be focused on the data engineering side of things, as well as uh, deploying to website, because after all, you put in all of this hard work and you want to be able to share your, what you've worked on with other people. So I, I will show you a little bit of um, how we put it all together. So this is the end product. It's our, uh, the website that we put together based on the Jupyter notebooks that Mark, Ho, and Nate showed you. And um, so if, if you were to go to bobo-nyc.datalive.nyc, um, you would see the intro document that walks you through it. And then on the left side, we have different sections um, based on the data science and data analysis process. And um, so each person like kind of took a role and uh, built out uh, various scripts to, to put together our data. And then what I ended up doing at the end was kind of bridging it all together. Um, so it was nice because we would, we've, um, we, were, we can make updates uh, pretty close to the time of the presentation, uh, all because we were using a version control system. It's referred to as GitHub. And that's what you see here. And this is where all the codes made available to you. Um, and, and basically uh, it's the way of tracking um, the work we do and tracking changes and merging changes. So for those who aren't familiar with GitHub and version control systems, uh, you can think of it like if you use Google Docs or Microsoft Word and shared uh, a document with other people for work and you turned on track changes. So um, it provides quite a bit of functionality in terms of being able to see uh, what changes have been made and uh, be able to request merging your document with other users within the group. And one of the valuable aspects of using a system like GitHub is the ability to approve changes that others have made and to track if those changes 
uh, break any of the other code that you put together. And so we find that to be a, a, a very useful system for us. Um, we have uh, the environment file, and that basically has uh, the main packages we use to run our code. Uh, we use Python uh, 3.10, Jupyter Book, uh, uh, IP kernel, which is related to Jupyter, Pandas for data frames, like if you're familiar with Excel. So it's a, it's a similar to, uh, to that. And then GeoPandas is kind of like uh, related to geospatial analysis and mapping alongside uh, uh, data frames and spreadsheets. Um, in addition to that, Seaborn and Plotly were for data visualizations and Streamlit uh, is for the app we built. So all the codes available here and you can at the bottom, like we said, you can feel free to either, I think one of the best ways if you notice there was an issue with the code, you can actually click on issues and create an issue request where uh, you click new issue and indicate uh, what the problem is. And then uh, we would get notified and we can look into the issue as well as you could potentially uh, uh, fix an issue too and, and do a pull request saying you would like to make certain changes to the document. Uh, from there, I wanted to dive into the library we use to put everything together. So as I mentioned before, we have a bunch of files that we wanted to merge into one, uh, one website uh, that uh, without having to um, worry too much about the layout, about uh, some of the, the front, end, uh, front end programming concerns. So to do that, we use this application. It's called uh, Jupyter Book. And we found that to be um, one of the best tools for uh, document and data as well. So I, I actually use Jupyter Book for quite a few things. Like whenever I take online courses, I'll, I'll take my notes uh, specifically for like data analysis and programming. I'll take some notes in Jupyter Books and, and they're readily available for me down the road. And they have a great search feature as well. Um, for instance, uh, let's see. So say we were looking for a specific word. Um, let's, see. Uh, let's try this. So you'll see every place within the website uh, uh, where Manhattan is used. So this is great because it has that's basically a built-in search feature for you rather than having to navigate um, the entire site um, to look for a given topic. Uh, it, in addition to that, it creates the table of contents as well. And we'll dive deeper into that uh, at the break, in the breakout sessions. The other thing I wanted to highlight um, is the app that we put together. It's a work in progress, but uh, one of the things, uh, when the, the library we use to build the app is called Streamlit. Um, it's a, another great uh, visualization tool, and it allows us to do certain filters. So for instance, on the left side, I, I'm going to specify, I want, so you can, there are multiple like bubble tea shop franchises. So in this case, I set the default to four in terms of how many franchises did they have in New York City. So I, I said they had to have a minimum of four. But if I lifted it, to, if I increased it to say they had to have a minimum of 15, we noticed that we are down to only three uh, bubble shops that have um, more than uh, more than 15, more than 16 stores within New York City, the five boroughs. And in addition to that, you see the graph is a, a dynamic graph. So anytime I change uh, the selection options on the left side, uh, the results are updated automatically, uh, which is great because um, we were able to do that without too much code. And um, that's one of the reasons um, the design choices of us um, designed to go with Streamlit. Another option is, okay, so we, we decided to look what neighborhoods have uh, the bowl shops. So you can also select specific neighborhoods and see um, what 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 um, bubble shops are in that area, as well as you can check the reviews and their the number of reviews and the rating of the reviews. So we created a table for that. So in this example, so right now list all the neighborhoods um, based on the NTAs. Um, what we can do is say we wanted to uh, hide that and then just list the ones we were interested in. So I could put Bayside, um, and then I could uh, and drop down. List is also available if you didn't uh, weren't aware of any um, uh, neighborhoods. Uh, so Flatbush, um, and then uh, this, we'll put Greenpoint. So then you'll see all the shops in those neighborhoods available for you and um, automatically. So um, there are a few things uh, that I may dive into depending on time uh, during the 
breakout sessions and one is to be able to download the tables as well. I, I didn't get to build that functionality in um, for the purpose of this demo, but that's something we can discuss and possibly think of other creative ideas. Another thing that I like is the class collapsible sections. So if you, you, you come to our website, you stumble upon this bubble tea shop app, and then you're wondering to yourself, um, okay, I don't know what's actually going on here. So rather than having the info take up the entire screen and made it collapsible, and if someone was interested in finding out more details, they can click show info, and it would show all the details um, regarding the product, our team, uh, our location of our, our application and, and code, as well as all, all the, um, the libraries used uh, um, and other like the data sources and the image of this. Uh, so we actually went to uh, VV Bubble T um, and uh, took a picture there. So that's where we got that image. Uh, the references I added here are Streamlights Gallery, which I highly recommend, as well as this um, YouTube uh, course. It's called Build 12 Data Science Apps with Python and Streamlit. I like the professor. Uh, his name is the data professor, and I think he has a great way of like teaching um, topics that are definitely challenging at first, especially if you're new to them. And so that's why I, I highlighted these two references. In terms of the gallery, if you were to go to Streamless Gallery, you'll see different um, examples that they provided um, that you could try out yourself in, in different topic areas as well. So with that uh, being said, um, take a few questions if there are any before we hop into um, the breakout sessions. So if someone had any specific question about one of the breakout sessions or had any questions in general, uh, we'd be happy to answer them before um, diving into the breakout session. I think someone asked uh, whether it was recorded and yes, it's, it's being recorded. I have a quick question, um, Chidi. What, what do you think I think this is really cool. And um, what do you think was one of the, the bigger challenges in designing uh, this website like this? Good question. Um, I, I think I think the biggest challenge is uh, for me is, and something I, I want to do more, um, add functionalities to is probably the automation process. So one thing I didn't show is how I upload the files. Um, in an ideal situation, you would want to, um, in an ideal situation, you would want to automate uh, deployment. So anytime you make changes and push them to our GitHub repo, uh, you would automatically upload those changes. So unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to do that for this repo. So when we had major modifications, I would have to go, oh, this is hosted in Google Cloud Platform. Um, so I would upload the files uh, to the bucket we created, so Bubba New York City, uh, uh, underscore bucket or once those Google Cloud Platform. And so I would manually upload uh, the files, but best practice is to, to use a YAML file and um, to automate the process of send, sending the files to whether it's Google Cloud Platform, whether it's Roku, whether it's uh, Microsoft Azure, or for those who've used Amazon's AWS. Um, there are a lot of different, I, I mean, I've used DigitalOcean. So in terms of like, I think for me, I tend to go with the tool that has a lot of documentation or easy to follow um, videos on YouTube. So I would say the next step I would do for myself is like automating some of the, the changes so they get uploaded to the website. Another thing that was a bit challenging, uh, one last thing that was a bit challenging was uh, for the website. So this is a custom domain and sometimes configuring uh, pointers to a custom domain can be a bit challenging. Um, uh, from the IP, the DSN, D DNS name servers. Um, but once you figure that out and try to take notes so you don't have to try to figure it out again, <laughs> then I think that's another part that's always nice to have it custom to your own domain. Um, it's not required when you first start though. As you can see, like, so for instance, these files, like this index file, if I wanted to, if I right click over here, I can say, um, should Oh yeah, copy copy public URL, and then if I can always open up that uh, URL without having so it's no longer my custom domain; it's one provided by Google. So you could still have the website even if you don't have a, a, a custom domain yet. So that's another benefit. But yeah, I would say those probably to automation of the changes and um, pointing to a custom domain. Thank you, Chidi. I just love how it's so dynamic and also free. So two really yeah. wonderful things. Yeah. So I will, um, I'm going to open up the breakout rooms and you can select the one you're interested in joining and then we'll see you on the other side.
Hello. We're back. Yeah, welcome back, everyone. That was fun. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Does anyone want to chime in on uh, anything that they, uh, any issues they ran into or anything they liked about going into the breakout sessions? This is something we experimented with this uh, year and we're hoping to, you know, improve, improve upon in the future. I guess I can like bring, bring like something up. I think we were kind of like pressed for like time, uh, yeah. Yeah. but it's like super um, interesting how like Co thinks about like spatial data maps and like what what um what type of like uh like insights are could be answered visually and um again i just think that that's super cool and uh i've like learned a lot from her this year so yeah i think just like seeing like somebody think about like spatial data uh it's something that i'm getting better at but so yeah thanks ho for for that thanks mark you are the the one that group us all together I think I would just say I had a lot of fun in the breakout room and kind of second uh, what Mark was saying, we, you know, open data, um, we didn't have as much prep time as other years. Um, so, you know, we did a lot of great stuff that we hadn't tried before. Um, so the breakout rooms, you know, kind of an experiment, but I want to thank all of the participants because in all of the questions, we had lots of wonderful questions. Um, and I think it was really something that we're interested in continuing to, to do using Google Colab and inter, adding interaction to our presentations. I think it was a lot of fun. I thought the breakout rooms were great, especially um, when there's a lot of different topics that then you, it gives you a chance to kind of choose, right? What you want to be involved in, like, especially on a Sunday. And sometimes, you know, when you go to things and you like want to have some kind of ownership on what you're learning, it's nice that you gave options to do different things. So I appreciate that. And I also just think that you guys, I could see how much work you put into this. I wanted to thank each of you, those pages and everything you created for these breakout sessions. It was a lot. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Are there resources for the breakout rooms, like the GitHub links and everything available? Because honestly, I wanted to go to all three, but I've struggled so much with APIs in the past. I picked Nate's. So like, are there resources for all those three breakout rooms that we can look at? Yeah, I guess I could chime in. Uh, we, so we have in the notebooks, but what we can do is probably put like a, a concise list. So in um, we have resource links available in the, um, both on the GitHub site, the, the main page, as well as the website. Um, but we could also put, uh, I guess, uh, uh, I guess additional links together and, and make that available to the group through the GitHub and upload that. Because this is definitely a working project for us. So we continue, we'll plan to continue to make updates. Yes, please, everyone use our stuff. We want you to. <laughs> yeah, this is open source. Uh, this current project will always be open source and it's like staying that way. So yes, please visit uh, this GitHub page. If folks have questions, if folks have issues, something that like we have not like created, but you think would, would like add to this, please like let us know. Uh, but this is for like all of us and for, for the open data like community. So. Um, for the question about what's the best way to contact us, uh, so you can go to our GitHub page and at the very end of the readme, we have linked to our LinkedIn GitHub page or Twitter. You can find us there. Another thing I wanted to add is um, like we, we definitely encourage you if you have a project idea of your own and you would like to contribute to Open Data Week, um, certainly consider it. And uh, if you have any questions, we're more than happy to try to assist you as well. Um, this is something that like uh, a couple of years ago, Mark, myself and Nate attended in person. And uh, last year we were fresh enough to be able to help Mark in pr his presentation. And now this year we're uh, taking a bigger role in terms of contributing and Mark was able to bring Ho on, on board. And, uh, you know, like the four of us like make a really great team together. And um, it's pretty nice considering like we, um, you know, have different schedules, um, work at different places, but we're still able to come together and, and work on something that we're passionate about, which is data. So we, we highly encourage you to, to, to consider giving a talk. Um, it might seem intimidating at first, um, but it's definitely, I, I believe all of you could, could do it as well. You want to close out, Mark? <laughs> sure, yeah. Again, I think uh, that you've said everything, Chitty. I just want to like thank everybody and uh, you know keep on being curious about data. Uh, get involved in the open source community, uh, learning Python and R or like other various 
programming languages, it like seems harder first. Just just stick with it, and um, it will that um, you will improve. You will get better. Uh, just stick with it, and again, kind of like pursue questions that you're interested in about boba, about like dogs, about like anything, flooding, climate change. Um, stay like curious about data. I guess that's my like parting words for this group. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everyone. This has been such a pleasure. I love NYC yeah. Open Data Week, and it's just been such a pleasure working with Marco and Chidi and speaking with all of you today. So thank you so much. Shout out to my sister, Sarah, who came and joined me. What's up, a Sarah? wonderful GIS programmer and photographer. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.